I just recreated the DoorDash landing page from scratch using Webflow. And I think this is arguably one of the best ways to get better at building your proficiency with using Webflow, mainly for a couple of reasons. For one, by building out and recreating a landing page from a top tech company, you get to see how those big companies structure their websites, you get to see and learn the types of copy that they use, and you get to see how they deal with responsiveness. And the other thing is I get, I get to learn new Webflow techniques along the way because inevitably I will run into obstacles that I haven't faced before and I have to sort of learn on the job or through the project rather. And so in this video, I wanna go over five unique obstacles and challenges that I had to deal with when recreating this DoorDash website, which I think will likely give you some really cool design ideas uh, that you can implement for a project of yours. So let's hop to my computer and we'll take a look. All right, so first let me show off what I built because I'm pretty proud of it. So on the left is the DoorDash website that I built and then on the right is the original. So you can tell it's not like a 100% replica, but my goal was to really just figure out the layout that DoorDash was using and also figure out the uh, responsiveness. And it's also not going to be one to one either because the breakpoint measurements that DoorDash has is a little bit different than the default for Webflows. So that's also going to be a little bit different as well. But overall, I think I pretty much got the layout pretty well here. And so why don't we start with the first obstacle that I had to navigate when recreating the DoorDash website. The first challenge was designing this search bar because the default search in Webflow looks nothing like this. And really the biggest obstacle was figuring out for me, how do I structure the search button to look like that? Because the problem with buttons in Webflow is I can't drag an image into there. So I'm like, okay, well, how do I get the arrow in there? And so after doing a little bit of research, I found that you can get rid of the text and the way around this is you can just add a background image of the arrow that you want to use. And so once you do that, then you can style it to look like that. So that was a big challenge because I just, I wasn't sure how to like wrap my head around doing this. Now it makes total sense. And then you could just wrap the search input this into a div and then add the icon to the left of it. And that's basically how I did that. So this is just a horizontal flex of having the icon, the search input, and the search button there. And so that was the first challenge that I had to navigate. The second challenge was designing this nav bar, because if you look at the finished product, you have this nav here and then it stays there. But as you scroll down, there's another nav bar that appears and stays fixed as you scroll down. And then when you scroll back up, it goes away and then we come back to the original nav bar. So initially I was thinking, okay, well with this nav bar, it's position absolute. So maybe as I scroll down, it can change to being a fixed position and I can do that. Well, there's no option to animate the type of the position of it. So I can't change it from um, absolute to fixed, at least not natively within Webflow. So I had to like think a little creatively here. And so I thought, well, okay, well maybe I can have a second nav bar that appears. So I have a nav bar scroll, which right now I turn the opacity down. But if we bring that back in, I now have this. And so what I did is I animated this to come in as I scroll down the page. So if we kind of quickly look at that, as the page is scrolling, uh, I have this animating. So the other challenge is you can't hide and show this nav bar. There's no option to hide and show it. So I had to, again, come up with another solution. So I'm like, okay, well, if this is here, what I wanna do is I wanna move it uh, up, up the page. So I just put it at five uh, REM so that you can't see it and that's the starting position. And then at 2% scroll, which isn't very much, it's like a couple mouse wheels down, then it moves down here, the opacity is still blank. And then uh, as you scroll just a little bit more, then the opacity turns all the way up and then it moves into the right position and um, that's how you have that work. So it just took a, a lot of creative thinking to get this working, and it's still not totally identical to the original one that DoorDash has, but it's like 
95% of the way there. The third challenge is there's lots of things that are hiding and showing as you go between the breakpoints. If you go to tablet, there's not really much that changed, but when you go into mobile landscape, there's a lot of things that change. So like, for example, this logo block here that is visible on tablet and desktop, I had to enable that to be hidden uh, on mobile landscape. There's this logo block that now appears here. So that has to be visible on mobile, but it has to be absent on, uh, you can see it's absent here on desktop and tablet. And what else? There's one other, there's a span here that I had to create because you can see that as we go to mobile landscape, the text isn't as long. So I had to create a span for that text that's visible on desktop and tablet, but it disappears on mobile landscape. And so there's just lots of little things like that that I wouldn't ordinarily think about. And that's why I like building out these uh, web pages because it gives me a sense on the types of decisions people make when it comes to responsiveness. All right, the fourth challenge is certainly easier than the other things that I talked about so far, but if you're a beginner to using Webflow, then this will be helpful to know. So it's basically having these overlapping uh, sections into the following section. So you can see how this image is sort of crossing over into the next section there. And so this really isn't that difficult to do. So if we have the whole section here, you can see that there's this negative margin here. So if I reset that to where it was before, it has sort of the conventional layout where you have the whole section followed by the next section there. So if you want this to overlap, into the next section, then you just add some negative margin and I did negative 7.5 REM and then that's how you get it to overlap into the next section. You can see it does that for multiple sections, including this here and, um, and this here. So that's pretty much how you do that, pretty simple. Okay, the last challenge was absolute hell for me. And it took me multiple days to figure this out because it was just a brand new technique that I had never done before. So if we go to the published site here and we're gonna scroll down to this section here where I have this two by two grid. So if we move that and make it narrower so that it's basically mobile landscape, I gotta scroll back up it turns into this scrollable slider, but you can't do this natively within Webflow. Like you can't have one grid cell essentially, and then one kind of partially showing here. Like you can't do that within the native Webflow slider. So in order to even do this, I had to use a swiper JS, which if you've never used this before, and you're not familiar with JavaScript, holy shit, this is difficult. At least the, the learning curve is very steep because I had to use a lot of custom code, which you see here, and I had to enable a lot of different parameters and disable some parameters to be able to recreate the slider that I just showed you. And because this has to be able to operate off of using a horizontal mouse wheel or mouse scroll, which is not a default thing. So I had to figure out how to do that. And so this by far was the biggest obstacle to getting this website functional. Um, and so I'm not gonna dive into exactly how it works because it would just take way too long. But if you're interested, maybe I'll make another video about that. But there's certainly some videos on YouTube that talk about this, uh, talk about getting Swiper.js up and running. But that definitely by far was the biggest challenge that I had to contend with. Overall, this was a really fun project for me to just sharpen up my Webflow skills. So I highly encourage you to give this a shot if that's something that you're interested in. And I plan on doing this with probably a couple other top tech companies as well. I'm thinking of doing Lyft next. But I had an idea and I want your opinion on it. So I was thinking of if there's enough interest doing a series of videos where I, again, recreate these landing pages from scratch, but I film the entire process. And that way, if you want, if you also want to recreate some of these landing pages and, and gain better proficiency with using Webflow, you can follow along with me as I build it out. I know for me, I can I often stay more accountable when I'm building along 
side someone else that's also going through it as opposed to trying to do everything on my own. So if that kind of a thing is interesting to you, then let me know in the comments below because if I, I get enough interest, then I will likely do that. Because um, if nothing else, it'll also just uh, allow me to learn the material even better than what I do now. So, like I said, let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, it would mean a lot if you hit the subscribe button. It helps me out more than you know, and just lets me know if these videos are resonating with you. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.